Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting battle video to share with you guys. Today we're going to be comparing the Microtech Combat Troodon and the Guardian Tactical Recon 40. These are two extremely high-end production OTFs that are both made in the United States and they are bo both uh, very similar size. Um, I'm going to be linking both of these knives right down in the description depending on when you're watching this video. More or less of them might be available. Um, but they are uh, definitely similar size. Uh, they are, you know, U.S. made. They're both made with premium materials. Uh, they're definitely in the same tier. Much, much higher quality OTFs than uh, some of the Chinese inexpensive stuff. Right. This guy up here is mine. I realize we're looking at a Hellhound or Signature Series uh, Combat Troodon, which means uh, the blade is hand ground. The entire knife is much more expensive than the base version, but we'll just pretend, you know, for the sake of the video that this is the base version of the knife. Uh, and then the Recon 40 is the, the only, well, I guess they do have custom variants of this or more, you know, semi-custom variants of this, but this is the standard production version of the uh, Recon 40. This guy is mine and this guy was sent in by a viewer. There are other large OTFs that could be compared. Um, I've actually already done a video where I compare the Combat Troodon with the Benchmade Infidel, so you can check that out if you want. And then I know Microtech's new big boy is the Scarab 2. I've yet to handle that one, but as soon as I get my hands on it, I'll do another video comparing it at least with the Combat Troodon. Uh, thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you're enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and you'd like to support me and get your hands on some cool stickers and other benefits, there's of course a link for my Patreon right down in the description. You're supporting me in the world to me. And please be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Like I said, those will be listed down below, these two knives. Depending on when you're watching this video, more or less of these might be available. So, uh, real quick here, let's go ahead and get a uh, measurement between the two. We'll start with the Microtech Combat Troodon. I think you guys, by the way, I do have individual reviews of each of these knives. You want to hear my thoughts on them individually. Overall length of the Combat Troodon, if you go to the handle, is 9 inches. If you want to go to the breaker, you're talking about maybe 9.3 inches overall. Blade length on this guy, if you want to measure all the way down here, you could say that it's 4 inches, but realistically, we're looking at about 3.9 inches of blade and 3.75 inches of cutting edge. Moving on to the Guardian Tactical Recon, this thing is an absolute tank of a knife, especially for an OTF. Overall length of this guy is coming in all the way to the handle because the handle, really the breaker is just a little ball bearing. We're looking at 9.65 to 9.7 inches overall. The blade length is legitimately 4... <laughs> 4.2, 4.15 inches overall, and the um, actual cutting edge comes in just a hair over 3.75 inches overall. So the cutting edge between these two is extremely similar. You can see here. Like I said, we're looking at a Hellhound version of this knife, so this is the uh, Hellhound Tanto. Standard version of this knife comes in a regular Tanto, a drop point, uh, dagger ground blade, and is there something else? I don't know. They've got other signature series blades, right? But standard ones look like this. As far as the uh, Recon 40, I don't believe at this time it actually comes in a dagger ground blade. Now, the Recon 35, it's smaller, it's it's medium-sized brother, actually does have a dagger ground blade. Um, but uh, these guys right here, these big guys, as far as I know right now, come in a drop point and then also a, a very interesting compound tanto that's actually, I believe, hollow ground up front, right? So those are your options there. It would be nice to have an option to have a dagger ground blade. I mean, this is an OTF, right? One of the main advantages to an OTF is that the blade uh, is concealed entirely inside of the handle. So where it's legal, I mean, obviously the biggest issue here with these knives is that they're just not legal everywhere, but where it is legal to have an OTF and where it's legal to have a dagger ground blade, it's really nice to be able to have an edge on both sides because then you effectively double the potential edge retention of whatever steel uh, the blade is using, right? You can use one edge until it's worn out and then you can flip it over and use the other side, right? It's only an option on the Combat Troodon, not the uh, Guardian Tactical Recon 40. Um, let's go ahead and compare thickness between these two. So they are about the same thickness, but this, the guy on the left, you can see there, the Recon 40, if you look up at the top here, the Recon 40 is a little bit more girthy. <laughs> <laughs> All the way around, the firing switch is more girthy. Everything is just a little bit more girthy. It's just, I don't, I need to stop saying girthy. Sorry, that's a weird word. 
But yeah, this is a big boy. Lots of handle, right? The, a lot of people, you know, when they look at ratios, they think, well, the cutting edge to the overall handle ratio. I don't want a lot of handle and not as much cutting edge, right? So if you're really into those ratios, I suppose, the the um, the uh, Combat Troodon has you know, a more reasonable sized handle to blade ratio. But for those of you who are going to take these things out and use them, you know, the way that they're meant to be used, you're probably not going to care about little things like that. Having more handle room means you can move your hands around and get it right into the position you want, depending on what it is that you're doing with this. And both knives do a great job of offering you plenty of room to do that. This guy definitely fills out the hand more. You're going to feel it. Uh, that's it's just the way that it is. As far as blade stock thickness goes, um, I believe the Combat Troodon comes in something like 135 thousandths, and the Recon is actually quite a bit thicker. Let's go ahead and measure here. Combat Troodon. Sorry, we're trying to get zeroed out here. Combat Troodon coming in at actually less than that, 125 thousandths. The Recon 40, I think if I remember correctly, was like 155. Oh yeah, 150 to 152. So this guy is the thicker boy, for sure. Now you can look at that two different ways. You can look at it depending on how the blade is ground. You can look at it as, you know, your uh, blades through the combat troodon, depending on the blade shape, might have a little bit better cutting geometry, right? Or you look at it that the one with the thicker blade is going to be a little bit more robust and a little bit more versatile. Truthfully, it's n probably not enough to change the outcome of whatever it is that you're doing, right? Between these two here, as far as behind the edge geometry, <laughs> honestly, the drop point on the recon feels a little bit thinner, but they're going to be very, very close uh, in, in terms of cutting geometry. Neither of these is going to be a performance slicer. It's just not going to be the case. We don't have blades that are very tall. There's not a lot of room to drop towards the edge, but honestly, it's not insanity behind the edge. It's not anything crazy. Uh, if we're going to compare the drop points between the two, I think the drop point between, uh, you know, on the combat troodon is probably going to be just a little bit better. Uh, the edge is going to be much thicker, uh, on a dagger ground blade considering the flat is right down the middle on the combat troodon so i mean if we're going to compare apples to apples here then yeah the drop point on the uh, combat troodon is probably going to be the most performance oriented edge um, and then uh, this guy the drop point on this guy is going to be close but definitely more robust especially out at the tip now on these two you know you can see here tip thickness uh, this is a, this is a hellhound tanto, so it's pretty robust at the edge, but I, I think, or at the tip, but I think the, uh, uh, the recon 40 is extremely durable. Um, anyways, not something to get super hung up on there, you know, pick your preference. Let's go ahead and weigh the two knives. So both knives are using, uh, aluminum, uh, for the frame, and then you've got ch uh, a steel chassis, and then you've got, of course, steel for the blade. Um, this guy's using LMAX. I think they used to use S35VN. This guy, uh, I know people say periodically they see LMAX on these guys. What I'm seeing here recently is M390, 204P, and maybe 20CV here and there. It's all essentially, it's all been roughly the same thing. But I, I think there are some LMAX versions sprinkled in every, uh, every now and then. Combat Troodon, 5.64 ounces. Guardian Tactical Recon 40, 6.14 ounces. So, I mean, there is a reasonable difference in weight between these two. We're looking at 0.61 to 6.1. You're looking at half an ounce difference. So this guy is half an ounce heavier. They're heavy enough, right, where that, that is just a little bit noticeable. Considering this guy is very wide and pretty thick, right? Not not that much thicker than the Combat Troodon, but it is going to... I think that's going to be a, de a, a decision maker for a lot of people, right? This is really big. If you're actually planning on using and carrying these guys, half an ounce more, a little bit bigger of a knife, a little bit wider of a knife, thicker of a knife, right? That is going to be something that, you know, you're going to have to consider, right? It is something that I consider considering how big these knives are. I always say if it's less than three ounces, I don't care. I don't care what it is, right? As long as it's not shaped like a like a square in my pocket, which doesn't have some, you know, really weird uh, uh, profile, I'm going to be okay with it. But between the four and the six ounce mark or the four and the six and a half ounce mark, which is my preferred you know, range of uh, carry weight. Uh, yeah, a half an ounce difference on a knife this big and this long and thick, right? It does, you are going to notice it, right? So this guy is going to be probably a little bit easier in the pocket. However, 
everything on the um, the Recon 40 is just a little bit... I don't want to say it's it's like more refined. There's just a little... I mean, neither of these knives have areas that I would consider to be major hot spots. Nothing is pointy, but there seems to be a little bit more rounded, right? A little bit more just kind of rounding everything off, right? This is just a, a slightly more angular thing, right? The texturing on the firing switch is a little bit more aggressive, right? I, I mean, I suppose if one was going to catch or kind of, you know, create friction on the way in and out of your pocket, I would, the combat Troyanon is probably the one that's going to do that more often. But again, it's really not something that, you know, people are going to notice all that much. Um, let's see here. Let's talk about uh, hardware here real quick before we talk about action. These guys are still using the tri-wing, the proprietary tri-wing screws, which sucks, right? Now, considering, you know, the new uh, Scarab 2 is using Torx heads, it looks like maybe Microtech is interested in moving away from some of this stuff so that people can actually get into it. As of right now, if you want to pick, pick up a combat Troodon, you're going to be dealing with these screws. I carry this guy every now and then. I'm not going to tell you guys that this thing is like a daily user and I'm out beating on it all the time. I mean, you can tell. It's in really good shape, right? My wife gave me this knife for Christmas a while back. Um, but uh, I've fired this thing well over a thousand times. Um, every now and then I spray some uh, rem oil on it. That's what I use. There's lots of different things you can use, right? I've never, you know, needed to get inside here. If you're going to be using an OTF in a very dusty or dirty environment, then yeah, you're going to find yourself needing to periodically take the plate off of this and clean this out. Because if debris gets in there, it can slow down the blade, right? And if the blade can't deploy, then you don't have a functional OTF, right? So that is something to take into consideration. On this guy, we have T6 screws. Personally, I don't like T6, but I'll take T... I'd rather have T8 because the bits are, you know, the, the T8 bits are bigger and the heads of the screws are bigger and it's just more dependable. It won't... Things won't strip out as easily. I'll take that over the tri-wing just so I have the option to get in there, right? Um, the pocket clip on this guy uh, can be, uh, uh, switched over. And so it can also be switched over on this guy. I will say though, that this is a better system for the pocket clip. These are OTFs, right? So considering the firing switches on the back, you literally can just flip. I mean, if this was a, I guess if it was a dagger ground blade, it might be, you just switch it, but no, cause the firing switch is on the spine. I'm sorry. I always think I always mix that up when the firing switch is on the face of the blade. You can do that. But when it's on the spine, you have to flip the pocket clip over the other side. This is doable. I actually did um, just, you know, just to see if I could do it. Um, I took a uh, some some vice grips and I took like a, a soft washcloth and wrapped it around here. And then I just clamped down and I was able to unscrew it uh, to get the pocket clip to the other side. So that's something you can do at home. This guy's much easier to do, though, because you've just got two T6 screws back here and you just flip it over to the other side. That's it's way easier. It's just a better it's a better design than this. They both have glass breakers. I find them equally unnecessary because I don't break glass a lot, but some people really, you know, like to do that. Honestly, I think the more functional glass breaker is definitely going to be the combat truck. It's, it's the way that it protrudes, right? You're definitely going to catch all the force is going to go right into the tip, right? So the impact is, it's going to go right in the tip of that. That's the better glass breaker. This one, way less obtrusive. I, I, I like this better for me because I don't use it. So in and out of the pocket, I'm not, not that either of them are bad, right? But I find that when I'm pushing this thing into my pocket, this thing goes into my hand. It's not really that bad. It's not like it used to be with Microtech, that big old pointy spire they used to put on there. But this one's better for me because I don't use it. So it depends on whether or not you care about the glass breaker, right? Um, but yeah, as far as which one's going to be more functional, definitely the one on the Comet Troodon. This one's going to work. You're just part of the impact is going to be, it, it'd be kind of like a lancing blow. It's going to kind of come off to the side and you may not get the same type of impact force, you know, between the two. I don't know. I'm not a professional glass breaker. Let's talk about ergonomics between the two. Uh, primary area to place your index finger and your middle finger right here, right? You can scoot down. There's plenty of room to choke back right? The reverse grip, also good. The jimping is in all the right places. They've got a good amount of texturing right here. Really, I I'm not uncomfortable on this knife. Uh, it's pretty good. The bill on the pocket clip is the hot spot. That's the part that's going to bother your hands, right? But as far as like holding onto the knife and feeling comfortable, it's pretty good. The, uh, the uh, texturing on the button is a little bit aggressive on this guy, so that's going to wear into this area on your hand if you're going to be using this knife continuously. This guy, pocket clip, is much less of a hot spot, and the entire thing is more rounded and more comfortable. The switch on this guy, very, very comfortable. Not aggressive at all. Very nicely rounded down. So, continuous use on this guy. It's a bigger guy. It's a thicker guy. 
Uh, it's gonna fill out the hand better and it's more comfortable in my opinion. That's just the way that it's gonna be. Both of them are good. Both of them, you know, are definitely good. You know, you're gonna be just fine using them. Obviously, there are more ergonomic handle profiles out there in standard folding knives, but because of the way that uh, OTFs are set up, right, they have to accommodate for the chassis and everything moving on the inside. So they don't have a ton of options when they're making the handle shape. And that's why, you know, we end up with a lot of similar designs with OTFs. This guy has a very obvious place for your index finger and then a much larger area down here where you're meant to put your middle finger. But, you know, transitioning between the two, I, don't, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily better in, in, in ergonomic profile than the Comet Troodon. It's just all of the little details. The fact that everything is knocked down a little bit better, the pocket clip isn't quite as much of a hot spot, right? Um, and uh, both knives, you know, you can sort of bear down on uh, if you're, you know, picking up a blade that doesn't have an edge on both sides. Okay, let's talk about action. We're 15 minutes in. Everybody just wants to know about action. I know. I'm sorry. So, if you don't know, sorry, I'm moving my mat. Um, the Microtech Combat Troodon um, just runs on the anodized uh, aluminum surface, right? Uh, it, once these break in, they become much easier to fire. Uh, you've heard, I'm sure you've heard all over the internet, Microtech knives are really hard to deploy. There's a lot, I think, here's the thing. It's not that my hands are strong. It's number one, this knife is broken in, and number two, there's a specific angle that you want to come at OTFs to get them to deploy easily. When I hand this off to friends, even, even my friends who are constantly in and out of the gym, their hands are strong, right? Even my dad, who works with his hands all the time, I see this. Yeah, you know, that's what happens. It's because people are approaching it th this way. You need to approach it like the path of least resistance, right? It's meant to go forward. So get your thumb down here and push it straight forward. It's much easier to do like that. I like to deploy this way. And then truthfully, I like to do this. I see some people do this where they bring their thumb. That's actually kind of painful. Honestly, just straight forward and straight back. It's going to work just fine. Um, but the button here is a little more aggressive and there's definitely some more tent. Well, it's more friction, right? It's not necessarily that the spring is that much stronger. It's just more friction, right? That's what causes the problem. This guy has a steel uh, plate underneath the switch and there are bearings between the switch and the plate. On top of that, the firing switch is much more friendly to the human hand and it's also shaped in a way that makes deployment and retraction substantially easier. This, by a long shot, is much easier to deploy. It is so much easier to deploy, right? Now, in terms of firing power, I'm thrown off a little bit here because this guy seems to boom out of the, I mean, it really, like the recoil on this, you're not really seeing it, but you can hear, bam, bam. I think the reason this is so much louder, it feels like it's firing so much harder is because there is so much less, I think even, the blade come, I remember hearing something about the chassis, even the control at which the, the blade leaves the handle. Neither of these blades rub, right? Some people will say there's reports of the combat troodon rubbing, right? Maybe after a while, I don't know. This thing seems to, I don't think that blade touches anything at all on the way out, right? And it's, the firing switch is so smooth. Everything on the knife is so smooth, it's throwing that bigger, thicker, heavier blade perhaps with the same force, but the impact and the recoil is giving me the impression subconsciously that it's firing harder. Is it actually firing harder? I don't know. This one certainly shakes a little bit more. They both fire hard, guys. They really do. But if I was going to give it to one for firing power, or at least the feeling of firing power, I'm going to give it to this guy. Does that matter? No. The only thing that matters is that the blade deploys. If you're watching this video thinking, I want to get the one that you just hold it up to a surface and it goes right through, that doesn't exist. That's in the movies. You've been fooled by the movie It or whatever other movie you watched in the 80s where they did that. With, that doesn't happen. Single action OTFs like the Microtech Halo 6 uh, run on a much larger spring and there is constant, an enormous amount of constant te uh, pressure on that. And they don't have the same system where I'll give you guys an example here real quick. Just use this envelope box. Um, if you were to fire this into a surface, right, there's what happens. All right, it sort of derails, makes a small puncture mark right here, right? And I know there's still going to be people going, oh my gosh, that's so, that's so lame. I, you know, like OTFs, no, it, it, anybody who still thinks that OTFs just fire right through a surface, I promise you, you've been fooled. These are some of the highest end OTFs on the market. 
You've been fooled by whatever cartoons and movies, you know, suggest that OTFs do that. Single, this is the same way with the uh, Guardian Tactical Recon, right? It's gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna make a small puncture mark in a cardboard surface, right? Almost exactly the same as the Combat Troodon. Uh, and then it's going to not derail, but just come off the, the, the hook comes off the thing and then you pull it out and it resets it, right? It's fine. That's, they're meant to do that. They are designed that way. It's a, it's, it's a uh, safety feature. Um, as well as a, a way to manually, manually reset the blade and have, I guess it, it helps if something were lodged in there, right? But anyways, your single action OTFs are going to be much more powerful like the Halo 6. I would not hold a Halo 6 up to my arm. I wouldn't hold any OTF up to uh, an arm or any part of my body and do that because you're going to at least get a puncture mark and it's going to bleed. Don't do that. That's dumb. That's a dumb thing to do with a knife, right? I definitely wouldn't do it with a Halo. Do I think it would go all the way through? No, but it's much more powerful. Uh, and uh, that's where some people get that idea, but there is no such thing as one that you just hold it up to a thing. Like, you're not going to be able to go up to a watermelon and push a button and have it. That's a On top of that, no matter what, I mean, people have different thoughts about stuff like this, especially with OTFs. They look at it and they think, it's a weapon, it's a weapon, it could only be a weapon, right? And people who have, you know, basically uh, come at this stuff from a very childish perspective. Um, see knives only as weapons. They couldn't possibly be anything as weapons. Knives are tools. Knives are convenient cutting tools for completing tasks that would require a cutting object, right? So when we're looking at an OTF, what I see here is convenience. Simple, in and out of the pocket, push the switch up, the blade is out, make your cut, put it away, and you're done, right? It is a convenient tool. It doesn't matter if you're EDCing this, if you're a soldier, you're a police officer, right? Generally speaking, 99.99999% of the things that these type of, types of knives, folding knives, fixed blades, whatever, seriously, 99.99999% of the things that these, these things are used for are just simple cutting tasks. Just simple cutting tests. They're really, despite whatever marketing suggests this or that, right? There, of course, I don't mean to disrespect the self-defense community. Obviously, a knife can be used for offensive and de defensive stuff, right? But for the most part, it's largely not being used like that, right? Most of the time, stuff like that is, it's, it's marketing, right? They want you to, the, the idea of it, right? It's cool to, you know, somebody who can afford a Ferrari, it's, it's awesome considering, you know, the, that the car is capable of going 200 miles an hour. But for the most part, it's usually either just sitting in a garage or it's just a casual, you know, driver. That's a poor example there. It's a, a very poor comparison. It hardly, not, not a very good analogy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if, if you're under the impression that these things are made as weapons, no, they can be, but for the most part, they're just, you know, meant as convenient cutting tools that are going to hold up to the type of stuff that you would use a knife for. And they both do that well. These are both incredibly durable. You can actually uh, check out X-Ring's channel for a uh, an example of exactly how strong these things are once they're locked out. And what locks out the Guardian Tactical Recon is extremely similar to uh, the uh, Microtech Combat Troodon. So yes, these are going to be durable. The materials are um, going to be uh, durable enough to handle what you can throw at them, right? Um, but the whole fire firing power thing, this guy fires harder, but does it matter? No, it just needs to be able to, you know, lock out. So, um, we already kind of talked about the pocket clip. This pocket clip, you know what I mean, as far as like how it carries, it carries deep, but this guy is sticking way up out of the top. Yes, I know you can buy a screw and just remove this, put the screw on there, and then you don't have that big obtrusive thing sticking out. This guy is going to carry with a similar amount of stuff hanging out of the pocket, but it's fine. They've uh, opted to prioritize the lanyard triangle over, uh, you know, the position of the clip. That's okay. There's really not that much sticking up out of there. Um... I, uh, I, I like the clip on this guy better. Truthfully, I think there are better designs for clips, you know, for, you know, all the way around, like in the knife. I think the, like the MSG deep carry clip is one of the best clips that you can get, but that's fine. Both the clips are fine. Um, on, uh, both of them, I believe the clips are steel. We'll go ahead and just check that row. Yeah. Steel clip and steel clip. That's the way it is on both. Um, but yeah, uh, in terms of styling and cool factor, this is going to be a personal preference thing. But truthfully, I think the more attractive OTF is the Combat Troodon. I think all the way around Microtech knives, they just have a really cool appeal to them, right? And I can understand why people look at them and think weapon, because they really do give that aggressive military tactical look to them. And I like that. I'm drawn to that. But I'm not under any sort of, you know, I'm, I'm not laboring under any delusion of, you know, that's 
what it's meant to do. It can, but it's not going to be used for that kind of stuff 99.9% .9 of the time. Where am I getting that statistic? Uh, I don't, it's not an exact statistic. Um, I think there is an actual statistic of, you know, how often knives are used in offensive situations around the world. And more often than not, in fact, the vast majority of the time when that occurs, it's people using kitchen knives. It's actually pretty rare that somebody uses a knife like this in an offensive or defensive circumstance, um, especially when compared to what people generally use knives for. Uh, if we're, you know, if anybody who's thinking, oh, it could, it's kind of a foggy area. No, it's, it's as far as that, if you're, you're, you're looking at those two uh, statistics, yeah, there's way more people who just use knives as tools, right? So I'm justified in my my opinion, or at least from my perspective, I am. Oh, I'm sure I just opened up a whole unnecessary can of worms. Anyway, let's get back to the comparison here. Cool factor, it's going to go to Combat Troodon. Um, in terms of ease of carry, it's going to go to the Combat Troodon. In terms of options, total options, these come in way more colors. These are black and, you know, either black or two-tone or tumbled for the blade. And there's only two options for the blade. So all your options there, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and carry pro that goes with the thickness, right? In terms of the cutting geometry, I guess technically, you know, the Combat Troodon does have a blade that's probably going to be a little bit better for performance cutting than this guy. But it depends on what you're using. Just because a knife is thinner behind the edge doesn't make it universally better. It depends on what it is that you're doing with it. These guys are using LMAX. These guys are using 204P. LMAX is going to have really good edge retention. It's definitely going to be tougher than 204P, but it's not going to be quite as stainless. Uh, the uh, Combat Troodon using 204P. M390 20CV, right? Occasionally LMAX, let's compare it with 20CV and the, the, the analogs to it. Much more stainless, much better edge retention, nowhere near as tough. You're going to have a much harder time sharpening these guys, especially if you've got a Tanto, right? On, on, actually on either of them, right? But uh, the LMAX is going to be friendlier to sharpen. Honestly, I think it's more suited for what the knife is going to be used for, but uh, it really, it's just, that's a preference thing, so I can't really count all the way around one, one way or the, or the other, right? Um, ease of manipulation by a landslide goes to this guy, right? Uh, that's the biggest factor here in terms of function, right? I mean, if we're comparing all those things, right? The, the biggest thing with this guy is functionality. It's much easier to deploy. And honestly, it's much more satisfying to deploy. For people who care, yeah, the button on this guy wiggles around a little bit in the open position, and a little bit in the closed position. Some people claim that their combat trodons don't do that. I honestly don't care that the button moves around. On this guy, the button moves a little bit, but is much less audible. Same thing in the closed position, right? Which one feels more solid? This guy, when you shake it, you can kind of hear the button moving, but everything else is solid. This guy, actually, I can hear the blade in there. I don't think... Nope, that's the button. So it's the same thing in this guy. They both just... This guy... The Combat Troodon rattles just a little bit more. Some, some, I mean, some of you guys might have different experiences, right? Sometimes the blade might rattle or the, the, you know, the button might rattle. I don't know. They're both incredibly solid. They're both substantially better than some of the cheapies that you can get from the, some of these other Chinese companies trying really, really hard to be Microtech, but they just, they can't do it. Um, but, uh, anyways, um, so that's, that's, uh, where I'm at there. Price. Price. That's the big thing here. Base price of a Combat Troodon coming in at $485. That's a lot of money. Base price on the Guardian Tactical Recon, anywhere from $350 to $380. AT, I don't know why I overemphasized the T there. Uh, uh, at least 100 bucks less for this guy. I think that's an ex that's a ridiculously good price. There's going to be a lot of people going, oh my gosh, knives cost more than $100? Yeah, if you didn't know that, knives cost, there's lots of knives out there that cost substantially more than $100. In this tier of knife, we're talking about American high quality, U.S. American and U.S. are the same thing. U.S. high quality production OTFs, uh, automatic out the front knives, right? They are in, in a, you know, this is on the incredibly high end of what's appropriate in terms of the price. In fact, I'll be honest and say that I think the Combat Troodon has been overpriced for some time. The first time I bought one was in 2014 and I paid $385 for it. 
I think that was a good price. I can understand as time goes on, the price on a lot of stuff goes up. So $425, I think, wouldn't be out of the realm of crazy for something like this. But it's just aluminum and 204P. I know, but you can't base the, the price or the value of an item just on the materials that, that are being used here. Much more complicated internals, right? Uh, way more complicated, way more machine work, more time goes into making this work properly than a simple folding knife made out of the same materials. That's why the SOCOM Elite using also aluminum and 204P from Microtech is only $280 and the Combat Troodon is much more expensive because there's way more that goes into this. That being said, I still think $485 bucks is a little too much for this. I think $425 would be at max the most appropriate, you know, the highest end of the most appropriate price, right? This guy at 380 maximum, sometimes, every now and then I stumble across one for like 350 or 360, right? I don't know if they've got their pricing worked out across the board, but that is a freaking excellent price. It's enough better that I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of blown away here. I mean, even considering this is bigger and thicker, right? A bit more awkward, um, and might have a thicker cutting geometry. Everything else, those are just nitpicks. Everything else is so good on this, right? We didn't talk about how solid they feel in the open position. Teeny tiny bit of movement. Teeny tiny bit of movement. If I'm being honest here, God, if there is an advantage, it's a slight, I'm talking almost a microscopic advantage in terms of solidity to the combat Troodon, but there's going to be some variance, you know, when you pick these up. They're both incredibly solid. This doesn't feel, see look how little this is moving. It's so little, right? So little compared to something cheap, like a lightning. <laughs> way better on these guys, way better. And that's part of what you're paying for is the, the better tolerances, right? The better quality control. So, um, you know, yeah, the Microtech looks cooler, uh, in my opinion. It's going to carry a little better, perhaps have better slicing geometry in some circumstances. But the fact that the, the, um, the Guardian Tactical Recon is so much more friendly to the human hand, so much easier to manipulate. I, I honestly, when we're looking at this big of an OTF, right, you have to want to carry a big knife, you have to be able to carry a big knife with a big blade, and if you're going to carry a dagger blade, you have to be, you know, in an area where that's legal as well. When we're looking at knives that are this big anyway, you know, the difference between these two is pretty marginal, even though there's a half an ounce difference. The thing that does it for me, on top of how fun this is to manipulate and how easy it is, is how much less it costs. Guys, for me, honestly, as much as I love my Combat Troodon, I'll always love it. For me, the winner here is the Guardian Tactical Recon 40. Um, it, pick your preference. You can ignore what I'm saying and, and do your own thing. Obviously, pick the one that's going to make you happier. That's that's what you should do. But the Combat Troodon is just way too expensive. Um, and the, the Guardian Tactical Recon is just as functional um, in terms of what it's capable of, it's just a lot more friendly. Uh, and it's really satisfying to deploy. This never gets old. Bam! Right? Really, really cool. I think that's as long as this video needs to be. We're going on, oh my gosh, 32 minutes. Yeah, this is definitely as long as it needs to be. Um, I hope you guys found this entertaining. Like I said, these knives will be listed right down in the description so you can pick them up if it's legal in your area. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody.